hanging to you. Again, I know you said don't worry about it, but it kind of sucks. You said these like um, one three weeks ago and another one a week ago, and I'm like, oh, God, I can't believe I missed that. I actually found your videos while looking up my name. Just seeing if anybody did like reactions to anything I do. I don't know, I just felt like it. Eh, you know, when you run a network, is when you run the Big Three Bucks network, and seriously, you just call you can call me Bugsy No Name if you prefer. Like you don't have to call me by my by my channel's name. Just call me Bugsy No Name or just Bugsy. I'm cool with that. But I'm here to look at your video because honestly, I was gonna do Hive Swamp Friend Simulator today, but eh, due to recent various events, mostly the Sonic, mo the Sonic movie trailer, which sucked out all the creativity out of me for a little bit. I mean, eh, I'm probably gonna do I'm probably gonna do Hive Swamp Friend Simulator later. But you know, eh. So, but sorry, man. but sorry, man. I really didn't get to it earlier. I know you say, I know you say, you know, I was probably busy, and you're right, I was. But still, man, I should be seeing this stuff if you're like actually like you know sending it to me, man. I should be seeing this crap. I should be like, holy, like holy, holy donkey. Someone sent this to me. I should have been, <laughs> should have been right there. But you know. Phase 2 has been kind of uh, a big thing for me, because I've been trying to get this channel back into shape after uh, after everything, because, you know, I want to push this channel further than it can ever possibly go, and that's why I've been, like, really just working on my, uh, I've been working on my stuff, you know, I've been working on, like, Oh, my gaming god is. If you don't know what that is, that's my Hyperdimension Neptunia fan series, which is more like a harem show. Oh, the fandom hates me for that. <laughs> because it has one of my... Because, okay, okay, let me explain this to you, because we're going to talk about your Sonic, the Sonic Comics stuff in a minute, but I want to explain this to you real quick. So, okay, okay, so I'm literally, I'm making that and a few other stuff, but I want to explain this one to you. The fandom hates me for it because literally, I put the I put like the four main characters of the Hyperdimension Neptunia series in like a harem situation with my OC character. My OC character is a part of a bigger narrative that I'm trying to push. Well, not like a not like a I'm pushing the narrative like my own political agenda, but like an actual fucking story narrative. And sorry, I don't know if you're, like, down with me, like, cursing, but I'm going to try and get to a minimum, man. Um, but basically, but basically, yeah. And, you know, people say, like, uh, the Neptunia characters are, like, canonically gay, and I'm like, nah, I mean, it kind of shows. I've been looking at other forms of Neptunia media, and they're, they, to me, most of them are bi, and no one can tell me. Uh, no one can tell me otherwise. <laughs> but you know, uh, the fandom hates me for that because you know, every you know everybody in the Neptunia franchise. Like you think the Sonic fandom's crazy as shipping? Oh, you haven't seen nothing, man. You haven't seen nothing when it comes to fuck. Uh, sorry, you haven't seen nothing when it comes to like the ne the hyperdimension Neptunia franchise. It's like I want Nivar and Neptune together. No, I want I want I want IF and freaking Bird together. It's like, oh my god. And you know, when they see me, it's like, your character shouldn't be with them anyway. It's like, dude, it's a different take. I've actually put it even though it takes place after Mega Dimension, which is another thing in the game which is another series in the game series. And I'm going to get back to that in a minute to really explain something. Because I really I really think that a serious Sonic story could actually happen if they give it a moment to levity. But I'll talk about that in a minute. But, yeah. the But, you know, even though my little series is happening after 
after uh, Mega Dimension, I put it in a different universe, or in, or kind of in a different timeline where everything does happen the same way, but my character being in there kind of changes the timeline just a little bit. So even if there's another game in the series, I can just it, it follows its own thing. But back to but let's get back it. Let's get to what you were talking about. Because I was listening to you, man, and yeah, you, you know, you're right. And again, man, I don't, I, seriously, I respect the fact that you don't think Sonic and Sally could be a couple. I mean, you're at least a little bit more respectful than the whole bunch of people I had to deal with when it comes to that. Like, the amount of hate, they, the amount of hate that people have for Sally is just ridiculous. You know, at least I respect you because you actually, you know, you, you know, you may be seeing it in another way instead of just going, Aah! like people yell this shit, like, Sally shouldn't be with Sally because this is, I'm like, okay. But you actually, like, explained it in a calm manner, and that's why, that's why I kind of, you know, like hearing your input because at least, because at least you treat, you treat this with, like, you know, you treat me with respect, I'm treating you with respect. Yeah. Hey, you featuring one of my comments, I apologize for having you make this type of video. And... and sorry about my logo, I just kind of had to... If you see my logo, I had to put my brand in, so sorry about that. Mm, yeah. Now, um, I only hate, hate the fact that... that now, in my last video, I was kind of talking about how Sally isn't a Mary Sue, and I don't hate girl power at all. In fact, here's one of my, um... Me neither. See, I don't hate girl power, I just feel like, uh, in recent, in recenter times, I feel like there's a big push to that girl power all, you know, all, all it is, like, it's an ever-compensing power. But, you know, like I said, in, you know, in the Hyperdimension series, my favorite characters are, ch my favorite characters are, you know, ladies, goddesses, you know? Not saying I'm, like, you know, not saying I'm a freaking feminist, but, you know, and that's, my favorite funny characters are chicks. Which, Again, I keep, like, whenever I'm doing a video, I'm just thinking about more ideas for all my gaming goddess. <laughs> you know, I was actually thinking of actually, you know, if you're in the hyperdimension Neptunia, I would love, you know, after this, I would love to hear your, your two cents on it. If you, if you've seen it, or played it, or heard about it. <laughs> because I need more Neptunia fans that, that are, you know, can subjectively look at my stuff and be like, hmm. Favorite character is right here from the Fire Emblem series. I forget her name. So sorry, dude. I play Fire Emblem, but I just got back during uh, Awakening, so I don't really remember who she is. Her name is Lynn. Oh, <laughs> you said the name, sorry. Quite, Quite a cool, cool character. character. And, you know, um, I like Rouge right here. I like... Who does Like, who doesn't like Rouge, man? Also, I like Blaze, too. They messed her up in 06. I, I even like Amy. And... I kind of like Amy's personality. I kind of like Amy's personality how she is now. Because I like that better. Because Amy's, you know, Amy nowadays, you know, Amy nowadays is kind of like her boom counterpart, which I feel like, you know, you, we can all bitch, and we can all, you know, we can all complain about boom, but at the end of the day, we can all complain about boom, but like, we got the one thing that we, that I don't mind from it, we got Amy to act a little bit more serious, and not all lovey-dovey, I like that. A little bit of course maturity, but you know. And yes, um, I even like Sally. Um, but 
But Neil, Neil, I gotta say this one thing, man. Never like if you're gonna read the IDW comics, just know that it not like the RG ones. It's so flat. It's like drinking very flat Coke. You know, you're drinking it, you're drinking it because it's there. It's flat, you know, you gotta take care of it. You ain't just gonna leave a flat piece of Coke just there. So you gotta drink it, but like, yeah. So, um. Let's see here. Um. I don't, I don't hate, hate girls, girls who hate looking weak, and I'm not a person who hates girl power at all. Because, you know, there, there are some, some people in the Sonic franchise, franchise I love, like, like you know, like, you know, Amy, Rouge, Julie Sue, and, like, like I, I said, said, yes, even South Lee, um, and Blaze. Mm-hmm. Plus, Plus there are, um, like, like I they just showed you, I also love even Lynn. And, um... Lilac, uh, Mila, and Carol are um, girls I also love. Of. In fact, um, let me see if I can show. Oh, um, some of these characters who have frequent that franchise. Let me see if I can find them. Kind of dizzy. Hmm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna like skip this just a little bit. I'm gonna love the camera right here. Lilac, Carol, and Mila. I love, I love those, those characters because, because I've been meaning to play Planet Freedom, but I just I haven't had the time. You know, I haven't had the time to just sit down, buy the thing, and just play it. I'm going to. This is interesting, and I'm not talking about the various things I may have seen online on certain characters. I, you know, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Little joke. Yeah, they're they're really cool. Um. Anyway. Um. My main problem, problem with how Sally acted in issue number seven of the Sonic Archie comics was how she behaved towards Sonic after he rescued her from her body. Because after he rescued her, he beat him up like a stick for saving her life and showed no regret for what she did, especially since the story that had Sally beating Sonic up with the stick seemed to want to express the girl power to the extreme. Yeah, yeah, man, that's just how it is sometimes. But, you know, I kind of, like, some parts of that I kind of just see as non-canon. Because the way I see it, Sally would never really truly hate Sonic, like, for real. And, oh, yeah, did you hear that, jo- did you hear that uh, Jonathan H. Gray is the reason why the slap happened? Yeah, it never had to happen. But it did, because the man just, like, illustrated it as that, because he wanted to keep his Son Amy ship. It's like, it's so fucking, it's horrible. Because, again, he's the one that split this fandom in two and made every fan of Sonic think that Amy, that Sally was just evil. But yeah, I do understand. And you did talk a little bit about, like, when when they uh put when they put Sally in jail when they put not Sally in jail when they put Sonic in jail and I was like yeah I remember that but again uh wasn't that during uh when Sonic was roboticized uh, like refresh my memory I think that's when that happened or there's it was probably another thing but you know it's one of those things that made people say oh well Sally is this and that I'm like the thing. The thing I'm the thing I was happy about was when uh Amy basically um you know, Sally when she was roboticized, she was like, 
you know, if you get rid of me, you can have Sonic all yourself. And she's like, no, Sal, you're friends. And I was like, why? I was like thinking to myself, why can't the Sonic finale friends be friends? Why can't we be friends? Seriously, but like, but you know. I don't think we're. I don't think uh, Sonic Alley fans are really gonna be friends with us, Sonic. I don't think as I think as Sonic Alley fans will never be friends with the Sonic Alley fans just because they most of them are most of them are like most of them have like the mentality of like you know and I'm not trying to be offensive or anything. It's just like some of them just have the mentality of kids and they just don't think like hey. Maybe, you know, the Son Alley fans are not as bad as we make them out to be. And trust me, man, I have seen so... <laughs> have you guys, like, dude, dude, have you seen uh, Dumbsville's video on, like, True Love Hearts? Now, that man, I know you loves it. I know you like Amy, but that man loves Amy too much. I think he replaces... Because he wants a good... Okay. What he wants is like a good moment between Sonic and Sonic and Amy. It's like you're like wondering to yourself, and I've seen half of this, so we're gonna. I'm just gonna hit the points because I've been going on. <laughs> I started going on for too long, but uh, basically, you know, True Love Hearts is just really like horrible. Like I'm like, dude. I was like, dude, you know, I was thinking to myself when I was looking at some of the fans, I'm like, dude, there's so many fan arts depi <clears throat> depicting Sonic and Amy together, and Sonic and Amy, you know, having kids and whatnot, but I guess that, that isn't enough, it has to be canon. Like, dude, me and you probably, you know, me and you have our own, like, lives outside of YouTube, right? But this man, he dedicates his whole life to Sonic. It's it's so it's so sad, man. Like, dude doesn't even like Sonic. He just wants Sonic and Amy to get together. It's really, really quite sad, man. I like Like this man, like, seriously, Neil. This man literally sits there. He literally like sits there. And uh He literally like sits there. And and basically just says Sonic and Amy, and he's messed with some of the writers of the Sonic Boom um, continuity, just a whole bunch of stuff. I remember that. Always always getting getting very very worried. Worried. Not, Not long, long after, after a bit of a talk, talk with Bunny. Bunny. Sally got, got kidnapped by a magic elite and both Nina and Sonic go to the next mansion in issue number 123 to go rescue Sally. Nina did kind of consider Sally a love triangle, but even then the romance between Nina and Sonic didn't last as long. Sally was chosen over Nina as Sonic's girlfriend in issue number 123. And, and Nina, Nina was, was nice, nice enough to let Sonic and Sally. Oh, you also forgot that Mina took the bullet for Sonic. Like, well, he took the bullet for Sally, and I was like, I don't know why, but it just made me flash back to, like, Tenacious D. I don't know. I don't know if you ever seen Tenacious D, but, uh, it was that one part where freaking, uh, Kyle Gass gets shot, and, like, Jack is like, Kyle took a bullet for me, and now I gotta. <laughs> Now I gotta rock for three, KG and me, don't forget about Tenacious D. And you know, I maybe he hates, maybe Ash hates Sonic because of that too. Because I bet you he knows about that. He just probably thinks all the Freedom Fighters are just kind of, you know, they're kind of more of a nuisance. But like, in this, at the same time, this is how I feel about Ash. Like, just... He never, he never grows. He never changes. He never does anything. It's always him passively, aggressively, just bitching at. It's it's him passively, aggressively bitching at Sonic, and I've always hated that because it's like, dude, he has saved your world so many times, but you ain't got nothing else to say. 
Like, I know we said that he broke Nina's heart. Yeah, but, dude, he saved everybody. Give the man some props. You know, again, like, when I was writing, um, when I was writing the old scripts for Sonic Freedom Fighters, I was actually going to get to the point where they do meet, where the Freedom Fighters in this continuity gets get to meet Ash Mongoose. And it was, it was, I was kind of adapting the part where where Sonic comes back after being gone for so long. And he goes like, I'm, you know, and where Ash goes, I'm, I'm also, I'm also meet his boyfriend. And like, Bugsy the, Hed Bugs the Hedgehog, one of my, like, my little OC, he goes like, so? Hey, I'm, I'm Sonic's, I'm Sonic's cousin. Do you, you trying to intimidate him? You trying to step, like, like, the thing is, I wanted to get, I wanted to kind of have, um, Bugsy the Hedgehog be the one that intimidates Ash Mongoose sometimes, so like, when he's around Sonic, he's like, like, I have, like, Bugsy the Hedgehog just flashing him the, like, the crazy eye. He's just like, boy, you better, you better back off. It's always like, you don't have to do that all the time. Yes, I do. The dude needs to understand. We're the ones saving the world while he's playing manager. And they, we need Mina to kind of keep the morale of the people, but, like, does Ash always have to meet us with some sort of attitude? No, he doesn't. <laughs> hey, so how does, does it make sense, sense for Ash, Ash and, and Mina to be dating, dating since Ash is, is Mina's mother? mother? I just, I just hate, hate the fact, fact that he sneaks Sonic like garbage, garbage and then he, he says to Mina that Sonic broke her heart. Not even that. It's not even that either. He's like, Sonic's a loud mouth or something like that. I remember him saying something like that to that effect. And, yeah, I just was like, well, you're, well, I wanted to say you're an A. You know, again, trying to stop myself from cussing too much. But you can, you, you know. You can fill in the blanks with that one. <laughs> now I'm just gonna say it. he's an asshole. But you know, I'm just the thing about the thing about Ash that I really just can't stand is the fact that he's just such a douche. It's like it's like some it, you know in the way. Ian Flynn kind of writes it, you know, he kind of has, like, a bunch of, you know, a bunch of other characters, like, hate on the Freedom Fighters when they're the ones that saved the world, why they were all roboticized. You'd think Sonic and the others would get some kind of respect from those people, but they don't. It's like, but, you know, I really think it's Ash's insecurity about losing Nina to Sonic, even though Sonic is with um, Sally at that point, or gets with Sally again, he still worries about that shit, like, it's gonna happen, I just sit there and go, hmm, that just infuriates me, because while Sonic can be hard, at least sometimes when I see Sonic come, he can kind of pick on me when anyone didn't really deserve me, only because I have issues of my authority here, and it's definitely because Bash was a time when he should have been a victim of Sonic Prince, and one should not have put Sonic in prison. It's not always that I don't blame Amy as issue number 134 shows. Plus, one, Nina had no rush for what was done in issue number 123 when Sonic kissed Sally. And, and she let it go. Two, Ash did say in issue number 154 or something like that. Nina got along just fine without him for a year. And while that could be true since Bobby Castillo and Marty are good partners. You know, I still, I still say that kind of, that still kind of pissed me off. That's still gonna piss me off, but you wanna know what Bugsy the Hedgehog would have done in that continuity? He would have punched. He would have punched Ash in the face. He's like, 
this is why I hate you, Ash. He's like, he looks at him, just goes, he looks at him, holds him by the collar. This is why I fucking hate you, man. Because you, because you're always like this. Without us, you, everybody would still be roboticized. They would still be served. They'd be still being served into a bot. And I'm not asking you to like us, but I'm asking you to respect us at least. Okay, because, you know, I have chaos powers that can turn you inside out if I want to. If I really wanted to do that, I could. Just keep that in mind next time you want to mouth off. Like, and I feel like Ash would literally try to be stronger just to see if he can beat Bugsy the Hedgehog. And Bugsy the Hedgehog just wails on him. And the only, and the real reason he would only stop is because, the only real reason that Bugsy the Hedgehog would stop is the fact that, you know, Mina tells him to, Mina and Zai tell him to stop. And he's like, just, he's just looking, he's looking, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna stop. He's like, and Ash would look like, seriously, you're not gonna finish me? He's like, nah, I don't kill. Well, I don't kill weaklings, you know. He just walks up. I just have like Bugsy the Hedgehog just walking off. Ash is like beat, like just truly beat up, and he's like, Ugh. I don't know if I hate him more or I hate Sonic more. <laughs> and, you know, next, you know, I don't know. I just it's those little vignettes from the old script that I still remember that I wrote. Sonic is a weak fighter and he needs to be evil. He's, He's actually a better fighter, fighter than Bunny, SDR, and Mighty. He is. And Ash should have realized that he and Mina would have died if Sonic didn't destroy the Quantum Dial True. in issue number 125. I would have liked to see here, here. Mina save Sonic from the new issue of Quantum Control until Quantum Q or something. I don't know. See, see, this is the one thing I don't, I, I don't, I mean, I don't think would work because I feel like me, Sonic. I know, like you don't see Sonic and Sally as a relationship thing, but in the comics they are kind of a thing. I just feel like Sonic and Sally just because remember, Monkey Con tried to kiss Sally, and you know they, she was, you know, he was like, "What's wrong?" And they both said Sonic. Because they both, you know, Sally does care about Sonic. And I feel like even if Sonic did go through with, like, dating, dating Mina like he did with Fiona. You know, he only dated Fiona, like, literally, just to get Tails to not, like, think about Mina. I mean, not Mina, Fiona in that way. And, you know, I just feel kind of... You know, I feel kind of bad. I feel literally kind of bad for uh, Tails and in that situation because it really did mess with them until the point where he actually just fought Sonic over me, over, over, sat over Fiona. And yeah, you're right. Sonic can be a little bit thoughtless sometimes. But I really feel like with Mina and him, it would just be kind of, he, he'd just be going through the motions. But, if we, but in one of your, in like your first video, you were talking a little bit about, um, you were talking about a little bit about Fiona. And I, you know, I'm going to explain, you know, with Fiona. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about Fiona for a minute. See. Now, I, I personally feel bad for Fiona a little bit, but when you slap someone so hard, they can literally fly to your wall, you know, you, you got some issues, you know, she does have some issues, and the reason she went with Scourge is because she wanted a bad boy, you know, and let's be real, I have a soft spot for Scourge if you haven't heard the voice, you know, because, you know, I, you know, I voice Scourge. And certain things, but I do feel like I do feel like she's only with Scourge because she's like you know 
she's, she's kind of like a teenager that wants to rebel against against everybody because she's like, you know, she's like the she's like the kind of messed up chick that gets with the bad boy, and that's kind of how she, that's kind of how she is. But I did like it when. I did like it when Sally like literally punched Fiona in the gut. Like seriously, that was that was the most satisfying thing in the world. When she was trying to manipulate Tails and kind of going, you like she was like Tails, you know me, you can you can smooth this over. And I'm like, you know, but if like, but in my um, but in Sonic Freedom Fighters, the same plays out. But it's like. It's like Bugsy Hedgehog literally stares her down because she is literally afraid of him. He's like, he just says one word, back away from Tails. Or I swear, I will paint the destructives. I will paint, I will paint the destructives with your blood. And he could do that, seriously. <laughs> I always say like, I always say like, um, Bugsy, you know, Bugsy the Hedgehog is kind of powerful, but he can totally, like, I, I mean, he's not as powerful as I like to make him out to be, but he can totally, like, mop the floor with, like, all the destructives by himself. I even wrote that. He's like, he just takes them all out, one by one, and they all just, they're all just cowering. They're all just cowering to him. Even Scourge is like... Even Scourge goes, well, you're just like him, but you're even, you're just like him, but you're even more powerful. How? And he looks at Scourge, he just has, like, this moment where he looks at Scourge and he's like, because unlike, unlike your, unlike your version, unlike your universe's version of me, I don't, I don't use my power to hide behind my own shortcuts. I got over him, and because I have, I, uh, you know, I can really fight with no, with no thing pulling me back, so I suggest you get out of our way, or I will beat you down. Now, I know the version, you know, Wrath cares about you, Scourge, whether he likes to see it or not, and I don't want to make that. I don't want to make him sad now. So you know, take your tell your little team to back up, or uh, I'm gonna get real violent. <laughs> See, but eh, I don't know. I keep talking about Bugsy the Hedgehog in this. I wanted to admire the things that he does all because Sonic's a hero and Mina's a lone senior. But back to that. But back to this. I think that Mina. I, again, I just don't think that they would have lasted as long. I mean, it would have been interesting, sure, but, you know, I don't think it would have lasted as long as you would want. I think that they would have, I think we'd see them around for maybe a few, like, about, if I'm spitballing on it, about 20 issues before something happens and they split up. I don't think anything... Anything other than that, I don't think anything would have happened from that, to be real. It's just one of those um, things I believe that wouldn't happen. It'd be nice, though. It would have at the very least, like, A, have character development for Ash to learn to re respect Sonic, or B, have... Mina get a fair I'd actually have Ash become like another villain. Because he just doesn't like the idea of the Freedom Fighters anymore, even if they saved his life. Because he just has this pettiness for the Freedom Fighters, mostly Sonic and Bugsy the Hedgehog. You know. And like, I don't know, maybe make him into an access with. May make him into like an Axis wizard, like an Axis wizard, like uh, an August. That would have been interesting. Boyfriend and Ash, and just dump Ash like trash if he's just gonna treat Sonic 
kind of crash. As for how Tails and Nina get hooked up in the 25 late years later stories, I don't know how that happened. Your guess is about as good as mine. I really, I really, and uh, Crystal Bane, like, as you sent me a, a comment saying that it's because Sonic and Tails have a thing, like, Tails has a thing for Sonic. And I, personally, it was just a joke. Personally, yeah, no. No. I personally just think that, yeah, you are right. I think maybe you were playing, or maybe Ken Penders wanted that to happen. Because, you know, that makes sense. But I want, like, a story explaining how that happened. I want a fan fiction explaining how that happened. Because, you know, that could be actually kind of compelling. The two characters that really just want someone to love them and they find love within each other. That's that would be kind of compelling and interesting to look at. And it, you know, people keep saying, I don't know. Like ever since Kim Penders did that whole thing about Sally and Jeffrey, I just go, everybody's been ripping on Mobius twenty twenty years later. Even my friend who likes the RP has been showing me that. I'm like, oh my god, why? I mean, sure, Sonic stops adventuring. But, you know, the, the, the way I see Sonic is that he settled down because, you know, he just wanted to start a family. People settle down, you know? It's kind of like how people say, like, why is Gohan fighting like he used to? I'm like, because he settled down. Because at some point, you know, everybody settles down and they're not as rowdy as they used to be. You know, at some point, that's gonna be me. You know? People settle down. You know, characters settle down. They have families, you know? And they usually just pass it on and if Mobius 25 years later really went, if they really kept going with it, I feel like, I feel like Sonic would have passed it down to his kids. They would have been the new heroes of Mobius. You know, probably at first Sonic wouldn't want this, but then she just kind of comes, comes around. And I got like the one scene where they're arguing and then they like make out for a minute because it just shows how much, even though they fight with each other, they really do love each other. And that was always kind of a funny little moment. It was probably just an idea by Ken Penders or Ian Flynn to have those two marry each other. Hey, at least Nina's better than Fiona's a girlfriend for Tails, and I prefer Tails dude, as a husband. Dude, I want to just say one thing. Have you noticed that in every, like, in, like, the two bits of Sonic Media where, so where Tails has a girlfriend, he always, like, ends up, like, not, like, just always, it always ends up bad for him. The only one that didn't end up bad for him was in Sonic Boom when he got with Zoe. That was actually a good one. For Nina more than that jerk Ash. I don't completely hate Fiona, and I do kind of feel sorry for her since... She had some tragic things happen to her, like her parents who moved to a family home and getting accidentally. Oh, I forgot about that. Mobius and being put in a prison cell by Robotnik. But for her to just smack Tails and to just ditch the Freedom Fighters because of an accident that involved Sonic and Mighty is just unacceptable. Because Sonic and Mighty didn't leave to leave Fiona behind. At the very least, however, I do like how caring she is to Sonic's evil twin, Skirt. You know, yeah. I mean, she's caring, yeah, but personally, how I'd write it? <laughs> Sorry, I just kind of... Sometimes I just do the Scourge voice instead of... When... <laughs> I just do the Scourge voice sometimes. Sometimes without even realizing it, I'll just be like, Yeah, uh, yo, how's it going? But anyways, um, what I have to say about, what I have to say about Fiona, um, Archie Sonic on, 
Archie Sonic Online raised a pretty good, interesting point in Mobius Legends where actually Fiona actually regrets being with Scourge, and she shows signs of it. And I like that. And there's another one. There's actually another one with Scourge. If, like, Sonic never came back, and Scourge actually took... Scourge actually took control of being Sonic, and Sally knows this, but doesn't do anything about it because she just really wanted Sonic back, and she wanted to believe that Sonic was back. But even still... Scourge, um, while he's still evil, Sonic has this whole, like, thing. He's like, at least I'm the one alive. It's like, it's like he almost regrets doing what he did. Again, like, I don't, I don't know, but I think Scourge could have a redemption arc. There's so many things about Scourge that we don't know that I have to actually... Like, when I do Scourge and Ichigo videos, I have to really just fill in the blanks with that. Sure, it's my continuity, but I feel like Scourge at one point was just like Sonic. He wanted to be a hero. Where Sonic became a hero, Scourge became a villain out of, probably out of necessity. Because he just couldn't be a hero in a world full of villains. So he's just like, if you can't beat him, you can't. And maybe that's why he decided. Maybe that's why he took over. Maybe that's why he took over Molybius because he was like he was sick of being beaten by Sonic. He's, and he probably was thinking to himself, "Why am I working with these people if they made my life a living hell?" You know, maybe there's a you know. I feel like there's a reason why he's evil. Like, I know, like. It's supposed to be like Mobius. It's supposed to be evil Mobius, and it's supposed to be like that just to be like that. But I keep, I keep thinking that you know. Remember when Sonic was like, if you were like me, you know, if you were like me, you'd be just like me. And Scourge for a minute, he was like, um, 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 like he was about to say something, and then Fiona just comes out of nowhere and slaps the shit out of her, and she slaps the shit. Like, starts fighting Sonic and telling him that he's weak and shit. I was like, but Scourge was going to say something. I, I, like, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't going to say anything that important. But I felt like he was. I feel like the, I feel like the whole, the whole RC Sonic team back in the day was playing some sort of redemption arc for Scourge and for Fiona. They wouldn't technically be on the side of the Freedom Fighters, but they would be there if they were needed. You know what I mean? Or maybe, like, Scourge still has the destructives with him and they just decide to help the Freedom Fighters because literally, you know, they're tired of getting their asses whooped by the Freedom Fighters. I think there's there could have been something there, but it never happened because, you know, the book ended. I think it's very possible for that to actually happen. But, you know, that's just me. And she is kind of interesting because she's kind of like Sally in, in that she's a kind of a useful leader for, for the Scourge and the Destructives. The reason that I said that um, Amy kind of was I mean, kind of viewed Sally as a love rival is because, one, in Sonic Comic number 142, when Sonic, sorry, when Sally recounted a flashback of when Amy wanted to first become a freedom fighter, Amy accused Sally in the flashback of wanting to keep Sonic to himself. Two, in Sonic Universe Comic number 21, when Cream brought up the fact that Sonic was dating Sally. Amy clearly told Cream to drop the subject. <laughs> and three, in that issue number two twenty, that was like a real funny moment. Two, by the way, while it is true that Amy allowed Sonic and Sally to date in peace, Amy still wanted to date Sonic. Now I'm not saying that it's bad that Amy loves Sonic in any way shape or form at all. I know that you might hate, hate that thing about Amy. I don't hate it. I like, you know, at that point, 
she matured. She understood that even though she likes Sonic, you know, she just wanted them to be happy. And that's a very mature thing for Amy to really do. I mean, that's a lesson that anybody can learn. You may like somebody, but they, you know, you know, they may not like you and you wanted to see them happy. It's kind of a very, it's a very adult lesson to learn. You know, it's a very, it's a very adult lesson to actually learn, which I kind of, I kind of like. Because a lot of Sonic fans really hate Amy trying to be Sonic, but I actually... Oh, back in the day, I really didn't like Amy, man. Like, you remember, you, you remember that one episode of Sonic X where Amy's like, well, well, Amy's like, uh, well, Sonic is like on the other side of this, like, haunted mansion. Because he's with the side of the ghost. It's like, Amy. They're like, Amy, I was going to do it. And Amy's so naive. She lets the ghost out. I'm like, Amy, you ain't a dumb. You, ain't, you aren't an idiot. You know that that's not Sonic. He always rejects you. What's the point? Like, you know this. You know this about the, You know this about this man. You know. It's just one of those things, man. I just kind of sit and go, really, dude? I go, like, really, Amy? Really? Oh, speaking of which, I need to, I keep forgetting this, but, um, you know, I'm at the, you know, there's this thing called Sonic Eclipse. I can't, you know, there's this thing that people are working on on Roblox called Sonic Eclipse, which is bringing back uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of like what Sonic Adventure 3 technically would be if Sonic Adventure 3 was real, and still being worked on. It just dawned on me. Lisa Ortiz is the one who voiced Amy, so I'm just kind of thinking. And Lisa Ortiz voiced another character that I like, so I'm just kind of thinking if I can find some artwork between, like, crossover artwork of Amy being Lena Inverse. Because that's how Amy kind of is, like a boy crazy Lena Inverse. She has all the strength, you know, via her hammer. And all the drive, like Lena Inverse, but she's just boy crazy. <laughs> she's Sonic crazy, and it's just kind of funny when you look at it like that. It doesn't really bother me anymore, though. I have no issues with Amy. Loving Sonic and wanting to marry him, despite Sonic not wanting to do so. In fact, I will say right now that I can't stand issue number 40 of the RC Sonic comics, and one of the reasons was because Sonic was put in prison, and while I do love Sally, she was kind of acting like an idiot in that issue because she should have just let Sonic out of prison since, one, he made an innocent mistake, and two, I heard this, and I heard this last night, I was like, yeah, but I can do you one better. So, you know where Sally was like, I need someone that will be by my side and not someone that will play hero? You remember that? Like, okay, I know I keep talking about my character, my little fan character back and forth, but there, you know, there was a little serious thing I wrote where when Sonic was gone, all freaking Sally and Bugsy Hedgehog would do would be confide in each other. They would literally confide in each other to the point where they were kind of in a little bit of a relationship. And he kind of, you know, Bugsy Hedgehog actually even has a moment where Sonic comes back and he kind of just relinquishes his kind of relationship with Sally so they can actually continue. But the moment she says, I need someone by my side, not someone that can play hero, Bugsy Hedgehog really seriously gets in Sally's face and goes, what, everything we did? Everything you did for the people of Mobius, was that all of us playing hero? Us saving your father from the void, was that all playing hero? I guess it was. Sonic, let's go. We're gonna go save we're gonna go save Tommy Turtle whether we're gonna go save Tommy Turtle whether she likes it or not. Because if I remember, I'm the leader of the Freedom Fighters, and she relinquished that control to me. So we're gonna go do this. He literally goes, see you later, princess. 
Someday your prince will come, and I guess it won't be neither of us. Because all we do is play hero. Like, and, you know, I'm thinking about this for my old script, and it's like, for, they don't talk to Sally for like the longest time. Even Sonic, you know, Sonic and Sal, Sonic and Sally and Bugsy and Hedgehog can just, like, look at each other. They can look, they, you know, they're uh, civil to each other when it's like mission time, but they don't really hang out with her. But in that same vein, Bugsy the Hedgehog and Sonic, you know, after spending various years fighting with Sal, fighting over Sally, they kind of have this whole, they, now they have this kind of brother, they have this brotherhood with each other and they just kind of, they're, they're more bro, they're more brother-like with each other after many years of always being in competition with each other. But when Dying Queen shit happened and, you know, she was Monkey Con and there's like this scene that I wrote where Sonic and, Sonic and Bugsy Hedgehog are just so mad at this, like, even though they say they don't care about her anymore, they're just like, you know, we only care about her as a friend now, or as an acquaintance. But when they see her with Monkey Kong, they put like, uh, Sonic, Sonic, and Bugsy the Hedgehog just walk, and they, and they just, they go so far to where no one can see them cry, and it, it's like, they both start crying and punching in the ground, like, this is so freaking stupid, why, why, why does this hurt, why does this hurt? And this goes on for like what about ten minutes? <laughs> they just walk back. And it's like okay, we're ready to go on. We're ready to go on the mission, princess. Like they don't even call her Sally anymore. They're just like really, at that point, they're just really just calling her princess. And even though she hates it, she understands why that she can never really. She understands why that they call her princess now because that's all. It's that's all she is to them now. And she she kind of hates this, but she understands what she did was wrong. Because she, during that point, she never really talks to Bugsy or Sonic. And she talks to them, but, you know, they really don't want to, like, really converse with her anymore. Only when it's, like, missions and when it's, like, important. Because they'll put their own bias aside with Sally just to kind of, you know kind of do what needs to be done. And it's not because I hate Sally, but I've always hated that moment. Which is like, I need someone that role play, wait. I need Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I need someone to help people understand don't play no one play Zelda girl. Like that still rings in their ears whenever they really look at Sally now. And there's even like See, they're even before the Iron Queen's, uh, so, the Iron Queen Dominion saga. She even regrets saying that because she did lose like two of the, two of the people who really did care about her. And that does that she does kind of regret that. Also, Budget Hedgehog fights a really a really demented. It really, like, you know, out of his mind, Axis Nagus. Oh, yeah, because I never said this, but in my continuity, Bugsy the Hedgehog is not only linked to the Chaos Force, but he also become, he also knows a little bit of spells from Axis Nagus when he was captured that one time. And he does fight Nagus. He's like, oh, Nagus. Oh, it's been so long. It's been so long, my my evil mentor. You may have taught me some spells, but look at you now. You're not even yourself anymore. This isn't even a challenge. You, and the thing is, Bugsy the Hedgehog gets like just just punched by Nagus so hard he get he flies up in the air. It's like, okay, that hurt. Oh, but just that I got more of those if you want to hear them. I'll probably send, I'll probably talk to you more about those in like, in like, uh, email form if you want to hear them. It's pretty good. 
It's pretty good old stuff. I still remember a good chunk of what I was writing back then. Everything in Sonic Freedom Fighters right now is getting rewritten. But I really do like those old bits of story that I wrote. Even if he didn't make an innocent mistake, both Sally and Rotor should have real things as a freedom fighter. And three, in a flashback of issue number 142 that involves Amy and Sally, Sally was not being mean to Amy, but she was trying to protect Amy. Yeah, but other son <laughs> Sorry, I paused. <laughs> like, where would you close your eyes? If so. But, uh, basically... Yeah, but people always see it like that, and I'm like, oh, you all see it like that because you just love Amy to the point where you can't see Sally just trying to be, and I go like, dude, I go like, dudes, dudes and dudettes, do you understand that Amy was like a little child? She didn't want Amy to go because she was a little child, and like you said in your video, she could she could have died. She could have died by a swap bot or something. She wasn't really mature enough to actually be a freedom fighter yet. But you know, it you know, but with every other Sonic Sonic Amy fan, they just don't they don't want to see that. They don't want to think about the reality of that. They want to be like. Amy, Amy should be like on the Freedom Fighters, and Sally's just being mean. I'm like, are you? I'd be like, are you high? Are you high? Are you high? Are you high? <laughs> now, nowadays, I've been singing in the middle of videos. I just break into song now. It's weird, but I kind of like the dynamic of it. <laughs> Makes my videos fresh and clean. But yeah, Neil, that's pretty much all I really have to say. I probably have a lot more uh, things I need to say. But I'm making this video too long with my just my comments alone. But here you go, man. I'm sorry if it's too long. But there's a lot of things for me to say, especially for the beginning. So I hope you uh, I hope you enjoy this. Neil, like, you give some very interesting points, and, and out of all the Sonic fans I've ever met, you're the most respectful. I like that, man. That's the kind of, that's the kind of shit I wish re the rest of the Sonic fandom could be to each other. But, you know, man, I'll see you later. I know this is a bit long, but, you know, I wanted to kind of give this to you as a kind of way of saying, sorry, I just haven't seen your shit. <laughs> sorry. I keep, try I keep trying to limit my cussing, man. It it's hard. Because, you know, normally, I just, I swear a lot. I swear a lot. Like, ask any of my friends. They will literally tell you how much I swear. But anyways, man, you, you know, um, if you have, like, a Skype or a Google Hangout, man, we should just sit, you know, sit and talk about some stuff. If you, if, you know, if you want, I think it'd be kind of cool You could sit down and talk about some stuff, you know, be kind of nice. Well, see you later. Peace.